With the new government in place in Afghanistan, the Taliban Supreme Leader, Hebatullah Khunzada, said that the new government will work towards upholding Sharia law. In his first message since the Taliban came to power, Khunzada said in a statement that the new leadership would ensure peace and development and that the Islamic Emirate has no problem with anyone. He also said that all will take part in strengthening the system and will rebuild the war-torn country. Akhun Zada's statement also gave a few indicators on how the new Afghan government plans to rule on foreign policy. The statement read that Afghanistan wants a healthy relationship with the world based on mutual respect and said that it was committed to upholding all international law and treaties not in conflict with Islamic law. It also assured that the country would not be used to harm any other country and promised the safety of all foreign diplomats, NGOs and businesses in the country. Coming to education now, it said that it aims that the new government aims to provide a healthy environment for both religious and modern sciences, but within the Sharia framework. Now the Taliban has already banned mixed university classes and said that men and women would be segregated all the way from primary school to university level. Coming to the topic of media, the new government has promised to work towards improving media quality and said that it is their duty to have impartiality in broadcast but with the caveat that it should be in line with both Islamic law and take into account national interest. But despite promising freedom, 14 journalists, both Afghan and foreign, were detained briefly. Their cameras were confiscated while covering protests in Kabul on Tuesday. Noticeably, there was no mention of any policy towards women's rights in a Khunzada statement. While the Taliban have promised an inclusive government, none of the government appointees were women. In fact, all the top positions were handed over to leaders from the movement and the Haqqani network, which is the most feared and violent branch of the Taliban known for its devastating terror attacks. But as the Taliban transitioned from a militant force to a governing one, it is facing a number, a growing number of protests against the rule. In Herat, for instance, demonstrators marched and waved the Afghan flag. Some even chanted freedom. Two people were reportedly killed as the Taliban dispersed crowds. Similarly, hundreds gathered at several rallies in Kabul in a show of defiance, unthinkable under the last regime. Here too, the Taliban cards fired shots to disperse crowds and though no injuries were reported, the Taliban has now warned the public against taking to the streets, saying that until the laws for protests have been explained, no one should protest. The group which ex executed people in stadiums in the 1990s has previously said that it would not stand for any resistance against its rule. For more on this story, our correspondent Anas Malik now joins us live from Kabul. Anas, you of course have been tracking all developments in Afghanistan closely. An all-male government has been announced with UN-designated terrorists as leaders. Tell us how are the Afghan people reacting to the news? Well, yes, at least 18 people, 17 those are confirmed, and one that is ambiguous uh, is, are on the UN sanctions list. Uh, the sanctions list calls for three things, that is uh, arms embargo, travel restrictions, and asset freeze. Uh, uh, the, those in the sanctions list and those who have been nominated are in the 33-member cabinet include uh, Bula uh, Hassan Akhund, the head of state, uh, the deputy, the first deputy, Bula Abdul Ghani brother, the second deputy, Mullah Abdul Salam Hanafi, the foreign minister, Amir Khan Muttaqi, the deputy foreign minister, Sher Abbas Tanikzai, and <coughs> there is a long list as well that continues. Uh, in the capital city of Kabul uh, today, we, uh, we saw some protests, one of them taking place in dasht barchi that called for a more inclusive government. dasht barchi is a Hazara populous uh, area, is a Hazara populous uh, uh, um, neighborhood where we've seen that the Hazara community is there in greater numbers. Women came out in, on the roads in the morning today. There have been calls for protest 
uh, <coughs> in the city, around the city, but we haven't seen uh, protests taking place except for that one in Dasht Barchi. I'm standing outside the Afghan presidential palace. Uh, this is Chok Zombak. Uh, and uh, beyond this Humvee that you see behind me is the Afghan presidential palace that has been, uh, that is now practically uh, uh, under the control of the Afghan Taliban. It is still increasingly unclear uh, that the government that has been announced yesterday, when do they, they, do, uh, when do they take charge? Uh, because there are crises, uh, uh, there are increased speculations with regards to Friday the 10th or that it could be sa Saturday the 11th of September as well. But as we speak, no date as yet has been announced, Priyanka. Right, Anas. The biggest question, of course, is where are the women in the cabinet? Even Akhunzada's statement refused to mention anything related to women's rights. The Taliban had earlier said that there was a slight chance that women would get a say in governance. But there is no ministry for women's affairs either. So tell us more about this. Well, the Women Affairs Ministry, at least for the time being, it, say, it looks like that it has been scrapped by officials, uh, by the Taliban leadership, at least it has been scrapped for now. Uh, but uh, Ahmadullah Wasik, the spokesperson, uh, one of the spokespersons for the Taliban has had said that uh, that uh, he would, uh, uh, that this is an interim cabinet. In fact, I'll just stop you. Uh, I, I'll speak to uh, uh, Umar Zakhilwal. Uh, he's just passing through uh, the former finance minister. He's just going towards uh, the Afghan presidential palace. Uh, he was the former, for, former finance minister as well during uh, the Ashraf Ghadi regime. And in fact, after that, he was the former Pakistani amb ambassador to Pakistan as well, uh, uh, um, Ambassador Umar Zakhilwal. I'll try to speak to him uh, he is going inside uh, the afghan presidential palace uh, uh, he did not stop for to speak to me uh, but i tried uh, to uh, i see umar zakhil while going in he's an influential political figure in afghanistan's politics as well a former finance minister former uh, former ambassador to pakistan and <coughs> he had recently pledged allegiance to the taliban to to, uh, support to the Taliban as well. A staunch critic of the Afghan, uh, of the then Afghan government, Ashraf Ghani, despite the fact that he has served with them. Uh, Umar Zakhilwal had just go, had, has just gone in. This development comes just hours later after the Taliban had announced their own government. So it is it is yet to be seen how inclusive that is, especially with regards to women's rights, uh, because we understand that the women minister, the Ministry for Women, has been scrapped. Uh, at least for now, Ahmadullah Wasik, uh, the one of the spokespersons for the Taliban, has said that this is an interim ca cabinet and that it can be expanded in time to come, hinting that there can possibly be a women rights minister. But for now, that does not seem to be on the cards. Priyanka? Anas, thank you so much for all those updates as well as the latest piece of information that you just provided. We'll, of course, continue to track all the updates in the new government in Afghanistan. Thanks for speaking to us. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.